you're going to take your face and observe all of the flaws. Plenty to work with here. Begin with foundation. You'll probably want to pick a shade that is darker than what you've become from not being exposed to the sun in forever. This will give the illusion that you've been outside before. Just, you know, paint it on, buff that into the, the waxy, pale, vampire-like skin you got going on on your face. Okay, all right. You're going to want to try to pull it down through your neck. Especially if you get a rash from, from being nervous about having to interact with people or go outside. Blend all of that. Probably best uh, if you go ahead and include eyebrows in your face. Normal people have eyebrows. They're used in expression in order to give the illusion uh, that I am a put together person. I like to draw my eyebrows in, but I like to draw them confident. It's not quite like Disney villain, but you know, they need to exist, which right now they don't. Like, this is how I do it. I just kind of arch my eye, my eyebrow a little bit, and I just kind of follow the imaginary lines. I give myself a little, a little. So it looks like I mean business. Like maybe you're thinking about stopping me in the grocery store to ask me a question or you're thinking about mugging me like if I have these eyebrows you're gonna you're gonna think you're you're gonna think twice. Not really Mr. T. I always end up looking like like Maleficent. <coughs> Here at Paranoid Panic Party we also have paranoid panic dogs who like to bark at all times at everything. Now you're gonna need to put some powder in that because that's some really strong um that's some really strong pencil that you have going on here. So we're gonna make it look a little, I mean, if not natural, less mentally ill. We just want to tell a visual lie. Try to make it look like a human eyebrow. Maybe it says, don't mess with me. You're gonna want to assess uh, the disgusting cystic acne that um, sometimes is present during stress, which if you're anything like me, then, then stress is just ever present. You're going to go in with concealer, and you're going to apply liberally. The natural gauntness of my features have to do with the depression angle of things because I forget to do basic uh, human things like eating. Emotions for me are tied very closely to hunger, and sometimes I don't know what hungry feels like. And instead, I'm just anxious or mad, or raging. It's really, it's a toss-up. I, I never know how it's going to go. I just take uh, some bronzer. Again, we want to give the illusion that I've been outside. Start here uh, near the ear-ish and just kind of carve a line there and then buff it out. I can't wear it as dark as David Bowie used to and I cannot pull off it as gloriously and beautifully as he did. So I'm not going to try. I'm just going to try to to give myself uh, a little bit of depth. We don't want people to see the black hole soulless void uh, that I've become since, you know, being a teenager. So you just kind of like blend that in and just be a visual lie. That's how it's going to impress everyone around you. And then they'll never know, you know, you're terrified of public or human interaction. Now you're going to want to address the horrid bags under your eyes because the weight of existence has been so very heavy. I actually got like a pretty heavy duty one uh, for this because the depth of the misery that the eye bags tell. So we're going to go in. And you're just gonna, just like a, f a football player, I think. I don't really watch, I don't know. Just kind of blend that in so nobody sees how dark your soul is. So that's, that's better. So I almost look passable as a human. 
Now, if on top of your regular depression, you also have social anxiety uh, or just a deep-seated distrust and fear of any and all people around you, uh, it does help to create the illusion of resting bitch face. That way, people are less likely to come up and talk to you. You're going to want to set yourself up so that this stuff uh, stays on, especially if you happen to have um, like midday breakdowns. You just go in with this eyeshadow primer so that you don't end up with, you know, the whole raccoon look after you, you know, have one of your many breakdowns that you'll probably have during the day. Next, you're going to want to go in with a light shadow. Go in with that. Give yourself a nice base layer. Just make everything sparkle and shine. Just give the opposite of what's in your inner core. If you're just kind of a black hole of self-loathing and self-deprecation, then you're just going to want to go in with your sparkly, bright, uh, happy makeup. It's about the visual lie. This kind of, like, standoffish, like, don't mess with me villain eyebrow, uh, it does wonders. And if you kind of add sort of a smoky eye, um, daytime professional smoky eye that says don't talk to me, that's my favorite look uh, for avoiding interaction with humans. It also really puts people off from asking you for things. I'm using this, this beautiful Lorac palette. Sorry for blinding you with the mirror. Uh, it's one of my favorites. As you can see, the darker colors are the ones that have been used the most. Uh, I'm gonna start um, outlining my eye shape into a much more flattering eye shape. We're gonna bring the wrinkles out of focus, considering that my crow's feet are like super deep. They're representative of, of the recesses of my mind in which I fall. Uh, when I'm uh, thinking about things that I did in, in like fifth grade and, you know, obsessing over conversations I had at my, my, my first job and, you know, just kind of going over every embarrassing, stupid, ridiculous, naive, terrible, awful, humiliating thing I've ever done. I like to, to just try to make those go away because they're just so reminiscent of, of those uh, little cracks that my sanity seems to keep reopening. See, on the outer corners, I like to bring the darkness in, you know, kind of pull, pull the darkness out of my eyes from my soul and just kind of put, put it on the canvas, you know, see what happens, go a little wild, go a little crazy. Um, I know it's probably difficult to see in this lighting because it's not uh, professional whatsoever. We just do a little more of the highlighting of the areas that we want to accentuate. So we do want to make um, the hollows of my eyes appear as if there might be danger lurking beneath. Uh, because the more that you blend, actually, the more intimidating your makeup game is. Not only are men going to be confused by the witchcraft and not talk to you, but girls are going to appreciate your craft and they're going to understand that you put work into this and that it was very purposeful and that you mean it, that you really don't want anyone to talk to you. Add more dark, you know? I mean, just think like depression. It's, it's always possible to get worse. Um, you really want a very heavy, a uh, very winged, sharp liner. You want it to look like possibly a weapon. The, if the eyes are the window to the soul, then you would want to guard the window to your soul, obviously. So guard it with as sharp of a wing as you can possibly handle. The trick that I have actually learned is uh, the, the felt tip pen works the best for me. Here, draw the line straight and then Pull it back over. But that's okay because you can always make it thicker. It can always be worse. It can always be thicker. You just have to be really patient when you're applying eyeliner because it is kind of a, it's a precision thing. Try to line really carefully. Get it as close as you can and then just, just make your wing, don't worry. You should probably keep your eye closed just because of the shaking. Um, sometimes that can make it difficult not to stab yourself directly in the eye. Because you're just going to take a regular Q-tip this is just baby oil is all this is so you're gonna you're gonna go in with your baby oil and you're gonna coat the tip of a q-tip it's like a magic eraser it's like xanax or 
or lorazepam. So you're gonna come in and you're gonna kind of like shape this back to something resembling an on-purpose eye look. Smooth it all out. Sometimes with depression and anxiety, you, you literally have to just start over because you have made such a mess of your life. It's a crazy place in here. We're just gonna, we're just gonna buff it out. No big deal, just buff it out. Uh, I do like to line the lower lash. It just looks, it looks more intimidating. Um, either like the part of the morning in your commute to work where you cry, or like your, your pre-lunch cry, or your after-lunch cry. Um, it, it's probably gonna come off. So I like to keep one of these uh, in my bag. Um, you can go with the eyelashes. I have a difficult time keeping the fake eyelashes on. You know, like I find like when I do the, when I squinch my eyes, you know, where I'm like screaming in the, in the car, they kind of like pop off on the sides when they're just, they're just gonna escape my face when I'm screaming into the void. Apply a generous coat of Waterproof mascara for obvious reasons. Sneeze while you're doing this, trust me. There's no possible way to do this without opening your mouth. I dare you. If you just do it a little bit faster. Oh, yeah. That's why we have uh, such a strong concealer. Yeah. Also a really good idea to, to keep this on hand. Okay, so then uh, you're going to want to seal your look. So... Um, I just go in with a nice translucent powder because I don't go in the sun. Um, it's actually a warning on my antidepressant uh, that you should avoid direct sunlight. So, you know. Get out of your sweatpants! Part of um, telling the visual lie is is going to be a little bit controversial. This is not coming from me. I feel the opposite. In the modern workplace or in modern society, um, it's actually been deemed unacceptable uh, to constantly just wear black leggings. Um, so that can't be a daily outfit. And it, it, it hurts me to say that. I don't like saying that. I don't agree with it. But in a business casual atmosphere, the casual part does not refer to leggings. It's worthy of being written up in, in some places. I can, I can honestly tell you, I can tell you that. The legging is just a, a modern half of a pantsuit. People in HR don't agree with that. A wardrobe is going to have to be part of this visual lie. Leggings, while comfortable, completely functional. They don't qualify as clothing. I am a big fan of black. There's a professional um, side to it. Uh, so I find that black still allows me to express the way that I really feel um, while also looking professional and it's slimming.